Hi everyone, in this video we're gonna see top 5 tools you should know as a developer. So in this video short, I'm just gonna figure out and give you these like top most user tools by a lot of developers and among them of course me in the first place. I enjoy using all of these tools and it's kind of like a mix of, I don't know, you can find uh, here different kind of stuff like you know planning uh, tools that allows you to plan and schedule for your work and for your like projects and put stuff together and you can find like a place where you can find uh, illustrations you can grab free licensed illustrations you can use them in whatever projects you would like to to chrome extensions that help you be more productive save time and get work done the right way so the first tool here is clearly see we got notion notion will by far I figure out notion in like two months right now uh, two to three months and I've been just like feeling so great about it It's just like a single workspace that gives you the ability to add everything on it So you can just take it as your home so on day-to-day -day basis whenever I like you know turn on my computer open up Chrome I just head towards notion every single day so I open up notion and you can see my schedule my to-dos list what projects I've got um, what is my today's schedule for like calls and meetings with all of like you know my team and work and stuff like that so just like everything goes inside of there you can just put it as a personal home and you can have stuff on it as clear seen here it's pretty robust uh, this is actually the website you can figure out on it and this is just a simple preview I've already got into uh, notion here so where is that notion there you go so this is actually how once you create an account just log in so it feels so comfortable I love the UI I love the design of it and especially the user experience you've got everything you need just like you know here with uh, like the sidebar in here you can discuss all your pages and inside each page you can have as many nested pages as you would like to so here's in here we've got my personal home I can here put like my movies list top favorite movies, yearly goals, so on and so forth. Uh, you can here have like a to-dos list and you can have like a table of to-dos list of today's uh, and you can label them. You can, you know, include or have the full Trello functionalities right into your Notion pages and you can do a plenty, plenty of things and it's fully customizable. I love actually the editor in here. Uh, you've got so many things to add. So for example, like you can, um, this is this is only just for that. Uh, we can go, for example, to um, let's see. So I got books in here. So this base is just like for books. I can put like books I need to read, what books I needed to read, and stuff like that. So many personal things can go right here, and you can even add more pages. So you can create an entire page, uh, my page in here, and you can you can have like a page with icon. You can add an emoji icon with that. Screws in here, just a mouse or or whatever. So it's pretty pretty robust, and you can add as many things. There's actually the commands. And which is one of the things I do love. So you can insert a new page inside of this page. Uh, you can have a to-do list. You can have headings, bullet list, quotes and dividers. You can even mention other people if you have like teams. So you can collaborate. You can mention them here. You can add a comments and just work on it. So it does absolutely great job and I love it every single time. So it just like saves the time from going to different tools and it puts them all together in one single tidy place and the UI looks absolutely amazing. Plus it has this Android application that does the job absolutely fine. So it's Android for me, of course it's available on iOS, but yeah, that's it. I do love it and hope you guys can check out notion.com. For the second grade tool or website, it's undraw so some of you might probably have heard of it because it's been lately like it's going super hard and a lot of developers are just like going through all these designs because they are free on license either for commercial use or personal use and you can you know you can find a lot of designs you can even customize the colors so i love the website you can go to android.co forward slash illustrations and you must go to illustrations so you can here go in and customize the colors or you can pretty much do whatever color you'd like you can change it to darker green to bluish green and whatever and you can choose the color you would like to and all the illustrations are gonna change depending on that color so there's a plenty of them I said like thousands of illustrations and you can find whatever you would like to and the other thing I love is actually the search bar so yeah you can go in and search your illustrations you can put for example code you got the code and there you go so if you're wondering from where most of the time or sometimes I get my illustrations for the thumbnails there you go this is actually the place and uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. It's just straight to the point 
and it's kind of like isometric like illustrations uh, that does the job and it's it has like people inside of pictures which make them look way much better than they usually does with other illustrations so yeah i love every single one of these and um yeah so you can check out this you can even download for the svg or you can use like download the png and you can include it you can check out the license for more information but i can assure you it is free for commercial and personal usage the third tool on the list it's one of my favorites actually I just like i use it on day-to-day -day basis whenever i make tutorials whenever i try to create or like simple projects and test applications i use the json server um, library in here so this one is kind of like a cli that allows you to quickly scaffold and create a restful api with zero coding so you just like pick up the cli you install it using npm then you just provide it with a database just a json database and it boom you got a server with restful apis and you got you can do crude applications or you can you know create read update and delete um, you can do plenty of things on it and it just like from a single CLI command you have got all of that in that So this is pretty basic and I love it actually so as clearly see from the stars in here It's quite ridiculous. So if you don't know that this is a great tool to create restful APIs from zero coding in just like less than 30 seconds. So this actually has a pretty simple um, here, a table of contents and documentation you can go through, uh, like what you can do with the CLI, what you can do with the RESTful API, like adding data, removing data, what you need. It's pretty, set, it's pretty basic. All you need to do, make sure to go ahead and install it using uh, npm install JSON server, and you got to create a JSON file that is gonna represent your database. So once you do, like you can create a db.json and you've got here like a simple JSON. So whatever you put in here, it's just like this one is gonna represent the table and you got everything inside of it. So if you go back into like code insert here, I got a basic Next.js block here that and I already created a database. So if you take a look on the database, we've got posts, has an ID, uh, title, and like here I got like, you know, uh, an array of posts. So each object in here represents like, um, I don't know, a, like a row on the post table. So this one is actually a table and it has all of these occurrences and, and all of these like uh, columns of different post data. So you got the ID and you can configure that as well because mostly this CLI or the JSON server CLI is gonna use this ID column to uh, either find deletes uh, kind of like you know here occurrences or rows out of this database or you can find them or you can add them so this is actually the main identifier but you, of course you can customize this throughout the cli so what you need to do just like make sure json server dash help and i've already installed that so make sure to install it there you go so you got here configuration and you make sure to provide it with a json um, saver configuration in here you can even change the port of it the host and uh, make it on watch mode which means if this database changes it's just gonna like you know reload and it just like does all of the job so plenty of things in actually going in here i'm not gonna go deeper into it so i'll just give you all the changes to uh, go ahead and check it out but i can assure you it looks absolutely fine and all you need to do is just to go ahead and do like json server uh, json-db.json you just give it that and i'm gonna choose port for like uh, let's say 9000 and boom so we got home on 9000 running so if i try to open up this uh it's going to open up all of that it's just going to give me a json response how awesome is that it's just like going into post uh, if i run actually my code so localhost 3000 uh there you go so we got next just plug and all of these are being fast using ajax from that server pretty awesome so yeah it's doing a pretty great job and i do love it already the fourth tool on the list is actually a Chrome extension. You can even find it on Firefox or Chrome. It's called Web Analyzer. So it's like Webalyzer, uh, just like spelled like Web Analyzer, but it's just like a shortcut for Webalyzer. So it's actually webalyzer.com. You can go right in there. And what this extension per perfectly does, it just like goes and just gives you the technologies are being used by websites. It just gives you like, um, you know, analysis of what technologies like back end, back -end frameworks, uh, analytics tools, well, front end frameworks like React and stuff like that, just JavaScript technologies and everything running on that web page. It just gives you a very detailed um, technologies about all the things happen. So you just go in there, you can go ahead and install it. And yeah, you can even use the on website search bar in here to search for a specific website if you would like to. But for something other than that, once you install the actually extension, 
So you can go to Webalyzer and you can clearly see in here check all of everything actually being uh, working on this like web page, just at webalyzer.com. So we got like Vue.js, we got Webpack, um, we got Prism, we got Node.js for programming backend languages, uh, Stripe is being for payment processing and Amazon. So this one for the accuracy, some of you might say it's not 100% accurate. Yeah, it's not 100% accurate, but it still gives you a chance to uh, mostly know what is actually going on behind that. Because if you like a website, for example, you say uh, you like actually GitHub, you go into Webalyzer, you pick up the extension, or you check, oh, this is being used Ruby, Ruby on Rails. And Ruby on Rails is, you know, indeed being used by GitHub for backend. Uh, I know that because it like, you know, it works uh, with some like GitHub friends there and they just like confirm it and it's actually available information out there on Google and yeah you can find a lot of things in here actually going on onto the web page if you would like to check more about what or whom is being used in this technology like for say Ruby on Layers framework you click on it it just gives you to like the website with more details so websites using Ruby on Rails you can find like Fiverr uh, Gear in here, Code Penayo, Dribble, uh, Code Canyon, GitLab, GitHub, many much more. So yeah, you can find really detailed uh, analytics about everyone who's actually using this framework, demographics, analytics, languages, uh, like what other frameworks are like, being used with like Ruby or Rails. It's just like super detailed. So if you're a web developer like me, I mostly use that. So once I get into a web page, I do really like about that web page. I just intend to go more into this, like what technology they are using. And I use this extension to explore more on it. So yeah, it's pretty great. You can check whatever website, either Google, whatever. And yeah, so absolutely amazing extension you should think of getting. And finally, the last tool or extension on the list is actually daily.dev. So this extension from its name, you can tell that it gives you news uh, just right into your like Chrome tab. So for busy developers like me and you, who doesn't exactly find the right time to go in and check out news, uh, read articles and stuff like that, or find the most interesting articles out there. So we don't have exactly the time to search for it. This extension does a great job of just like going, scraping the web, and it knows exactly what the hottest, uh, let's say medium posts, articles, uh, everything outside of like new no, news and hot news uh, on the developer's world and grabs it and it puts it right into your new tab. So if you just like try to open up a new tab in here, it's clear to see I get everything from like what happened and posts. Like you can choose but like most upvoted or most popular. And the most popular in here, find like what is currently being hot and popular. You can read more articles like 10 awesome GitHub repos every developer should know, uh, the 5am hack, you can read more about it. But without this extension, me and you as developers, we won't exactly find the time to go in and search for this. So it's always a great try to go in and just like, you know, just it's, it's right into your new tab. All you need to do is just open up a new tab and you've got the chance to explore a plethora of articles and posts now, of course, reading it would just make you a better developer. So we should all know about that. It's actually a great tool. There's a plenty of things going on behind the scenes of it. Uh, you can actually here, you can check my public resources. You can add resources you would like to any website and it just tries to scrape it. Uh, of course, you can change like hashtags and stuff like that. And you can do a, like a great job going and visiting and finding the great articles you would like to. So it's actually a great extension. I've been using it for the past couple of months and yeah, it's doing uh, a great job for me. Just like I find myself reading more articles than often with this extension than with without it. So yeah, I can go in and just give you my opinion. This extension really deserves it and you can just go ahead and give it a try. So yeah, you can go to daily.dev. You can grab it for either Chrome, Firefox or uh, yeah, Microsoft Edge. And yeah, so it looks absolutely amazing for me. Uh, anyhow, guys, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick, easy video tutorial. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed as always. And make sure to subscribe, push that like button for more video tutorials. And I'll see you all, hopefully, in the next ones. Bye.